in restricted location, which means are safe in the central office. Of course, if someone by a system takes it at home and put the system under a microscope, it will be no more safe, but for normal operation in central office, they are safe. So that, so that no optical shutdown or optical reduction is now required and prescribed by recommendation for uh, such systems. For historical reason, the ALS procedure has moved in the appendix, which is only an example, but uh, is not required to apply. using uh, optical amplifier, again, <coughs> again the power levels involved can be dangerous. So that uh, an automatic power shutdown procedure has been defined. However, in the example I gave you a few minutes ago, I told you that the shutdown procedure is uh, started by the receiving end. Whenever I uh, detach the connector, the receiver will detect loss of power and will send a message to shut down the laser. This applies only to the so-called interworking system. But, for example, if we have uh, systems that are transversely compatible which means the transmitter is from vendor A, the receiver is from vendor B, such a procedure will not be implemented because each vendor has its own procedure. That means that optical amplifiers can be very dangerous in non-interworking systems, mainly in optical transport systems which are using Raman amplifiers or WDM system when the number of uh, channel is very high, so that if you have uh, 128 channels, each one carrying one milliwatt, the total power is well above uh, 100 milliwatt. So that uh, now in uh, G664, we have uh, defined some guidance to have uh, always safe working conditions in uh, this system. But, however, automatic power reduction techniques are not recommended, are only described as example. They could not work in case of uh, transverse, co transverse compatibility. Moreover, to not to not interrupt the service, the power is not switched off completely, but it's only reduced. Since I have been uh, talking several times of Raman amplifiers and from uh, your side I saw a little bit of uh, excitation. I tried uh, two days ago to draw the Raman amplifier on the whiteboard, but it's better to have uh, a dedicated uh, slide to see the working of Raman amplifier. This is the receiver. This is the output to the receiver. 
the signal is coming from the network this way. Here we have the network and the, si the signal that has been transmitted for a remote transmitter is coming to the receiver. This is the Raman amplifier, which is, uh, a, from a theoretical point of view, very simple. We have uh, optical pumps, which means we have a dedicated laser able to generate high levels of power. This power is sent directly inside the transmission fiber, which is a standard fiber. We don't have any need for special kind of fibers like in here, Airbnb dotted fiber amplifier. We use the same transmission fiber. That means that if we have our system already installed, we can always insert the Raman amplifier at the receiving end. The power which is injected into the fiber is coupled by means of WDM coupler and then the power going in a counter direction is coupled to the signal and amplifies it. The amplified signal go to the WDM go out from this port, is uh, equalized in game, and uh, reach the receiver. This is the basic working of a Raman amplifier. Raman amplifier that is now commercially available since many years is a powerful method to uh, upgrade the system, since it gives you some more dBs available, which means that you can pass, for example, from 2.5 gigabit per second up to 10 gigabit per second per channel. They are very dangerous because if I remove the connector here, I will get somewhat of optical power getting off the connector. So that special prescription have been given for Raman amplifier. For example, before activating the Raman power, it's better to calculate the distance at which the optical pump will be reduced to less than 150 milliwatt, which is uh, uh, seen as a a safe optical level at this wavelength. If it is possible, you have to inspect that there is no accessibility to the optical link up to, the, up to that distance. Moreover, pay attention to the fact that even if the theory says that uh, when you send light into the fiber, it is trapped forever until the end, this uh, really is not true. Light will try to exit the optical fiber at uh, any bend, which means that if you have a very tight bends, you can have losses you can have losses as high as uh, 0.1 dB, the same loss you can have uh, in a splice. Well, the dB is uh, a misleading unit because uh, it is not an absolute unit, but uh, it's only a method to, uh, to say a fraction. So that uh, if I have, uh, for example, a join, a joint, a spliced joint with 0.1 dB of loss, and I go through the joint with 1 milliwatt, I will have a loss of uh, 1 point dB. But it means, for example, 
uh, I tell I, I don't have the will to make the calculation, but I say just uh, a number, it will be one nanowatt of loss. One nanowatt will be lost in the joint. But if I increase the power to two watt, the attenuation is still 0.1 dB, but the loss will be much higher. We build some milliwatt, which means that uh, the joint can explode. And uh, it happened. It happened, for example, in Japan, when increasing the uh, systems passing from single channel systems to multi channel systems, WDM systems. Since the total power increased up to 100 milliwatt, some joints that were good enough for single channel were not more good enough for multi channel and they break. So, this is the reason for which we have this ballet. If you use Raman amplifier, please be sure that no joints are present in the proximity of the output of the Raman amplifier. And uh, this applies, of course, not only to joint, but also to connectors. Well, We have listed here other two precautions to be taken while activating Raman power. So that uh, the common understanding is that please avoid any loss in the vicinity of the optical Raman amplifier since this loss will hit the fiber and possibly will break it at the end. Last two slides. Laser, Rama laser induced damages. Let's say the we observe a reduction in the amplification level. We, after uh, some years, we observe a reduction in the gain of the Raman amplifier. Maybe that this reduction of the gain is due to some uh, slow damage mechanism, something which is degrading in the time slowly. For example, a connector. Normally, a technician would increase the pump power to get again the previous gain. This is a very dangerous procedure because if I increase the power, I will get much more damage. And at the end, I will have a catastrophic failure, which means that the fiber will break, but not only. If the local heating is very high, the cable may burn. The same applies to bendings. This is the fiber, this is the light, but some light will escape from a tight bending. Well, this is optical power, this is energy. The energy will hit the, the coating, which is uh, the acrylic compound, which is used around uh, the cladding to give the fiber 
mechanical strength. And uh, by means of this uh, heating, we will have uh, also thermal reaction. At this point in time, the fiber will be modified and the absorption of light will increase. The heating will increase. And at the end, everything goes through the, towards the fire. The fiber cable will burn. I give you just, I give you just one number to fully understand what are the problems with the high power level. I have a fiber and I have some power going along the fiber. Let's say it's a WDM system or it's a Raman amplifier, Raman amplified the final end of the fiber. Well, I can have 100 milliwatt, but the fiber has a very reduced core section. The diameter is between 8 and 10 micrometers. Please make some very easy calculation and uh, try to find the power density, which means what per square meter. As an example, the sun at the sea level during the summer has a power density which is 1.5 kilowatt per square meter. This is a reference number. Well, inside the fiber, the power density is three order of magnitude higher. It's six to seven megawatt per square meter. And with six to seven megawatt per square meter, you are able to burn everything. So, please, it's a real problem. This should be... Yes. This is the last slide, and uh, it is only an indication where to find appropriate lists of practices to be followed. Uh, beside the recommendation, there are also some supplement to recommendation which are some sort of uh, application notes. In supplement 39 to G series recommendation, you will find uh, the practices to be followed for optical safety. And uh, for specifically for optical fiber and optical cables with, to be used in optical networks. All uh, other, the other information are found in the recommendation, in the cable recommendation L68. This concludes my presentation of chapter 10 and my presentation of uh, related to the tutorial. If there is any question, please. Otherwise, I have a few slides for uh, the question that was raised the first day concerning the fiber selection, the type of fiber to be used in the network. Okay. I am always asked the same question. What is better possible? And uh, we have to distinguish two very different cases. The first one is you have already the fiber plant installed. This is not the question. We are speaking about something different. We are speaking about the fact that we have to install fibers, which fiber have I to install? Because if I have already the fiber installed, the problem is which system can be run 
on that fiber plant. I have already G652. What system I can put on the fiber plant? Possibly with a performance reduction, maybe, or possibly I have to spend some money for dispersion compensation, but I have already the fiber plant. Here we are speaking of a different problem. I have a green field, I have to put fibers into the ground, how to select the fibers? Well, both fiber can be used for long haul transmission and the difference, first of all, G652 costs less than G655. This is the starting point so that there should be a balance in the choice between the cost of the plant and the performance which is required. So, let's start. There are many parameters that influence the choice of uh, the fiber. And these parameters are related both to the topology. For example, if uh, I am allowed to use uh, dispersion compensating fibers, and to the type of the system I am going to install. For example, WDM with high channel count and with low spacing. And the wavelength I am going to use. Another thing very important is that the fact, is the fact that the fiber is, go, is changing continuously. We are speaking about two fibers. 652 and 655, which do not exist. Those fibers do not exist. We have some version of this fiber now. If you go to buy fibers, you will buy G652.C or .D, which are completely different from the first specified fibers, and also G655, in the reality, does not exist. If you take a look of the recommendation in force, you will not find anymore the original G655, but you will find only the fibers that are produced start. It has been deployed in large quantities. In this find, Lee is a modification of the zero dispersion, dispersion shifted fiber, the 653, in that it leaves a small residual amount of dispersion in order to minimize nonlinear effects, which are very important in high power, high number of channels, WDM systems. Well, in the reality, in the reality, the fiber 6555, even if it has been specified, it has been specified in a manner through a box approach, which in the reality identified two different fibers produced by two different set of vendors, so that they were the the same number, the same specification fiber, but were two different fibers. And this is the slide saying that one type of G655 had a large core and was called leaf fibers. The other group of vendors were producing a fiber with a very uh, small reduced size core. And uh, if uh, some of you ask the question, which one of the two approaches is better, the answer is uh, still the same. It depends on the application. And if you ask a vendor, of course, he, he will tell you that uh, his fiber is better. Comparison. We are entering in the core of our decisions to be made. With G655, 
655 fiber, the long haul systems are easier to deploy because it has a slightly lower attenuation but has much less dispersion. The other fiber has a greater dispersion. It can be used also for long haul transmission, but you need some extra money for dispersion compensation. It can be used in some sense up to 10 gigabit per second per lambda. If you pass to 40 gigabit per second per lambda, please remove this fiber from your mind. It will be too costly to use it for 40 gigabit per second. Because uh, 40 gigabit per second with respect to 10 gigabit per second requires a 16-fold increase in the accuracy. Because uh, you were told, I have a, a given attenuation on the fiber link, I put a dispersion compensator and I am done. It's not exactly. You have to put a dispersion compensator exactly of the same value. And the accuracy required is very high. Of course, the main advantage of 652 is that the fiber is less expensive so that it is used extensively in every part of the network in which the performance is not so uh, high, in which uh, the requirements are not so stringent. For example, in what uh, we saw uh, as metro access and metro network. And uh, according to the vision of several people, this uh, position will not change. In the metro area, we are going to use still the G652. This is a table which is a resume of the optical fiber properties. I recall, just recall you had a very good presentation by Gerard. I just recall you that this was the original fiber. These are the fibers you can buy now, and they have been optimized by removing the water peak so that they. Do you remember the, the slide for GPON in which I showed you all the bandwidth from 1.3 to 1.6? Yes, this is the case in which you can use these two fibers. As I told you before, it can be used up to 10 gigabit per second, 40 kilometers. In some cases, you can use also for 40 gigabit per second, but it is not recommended. I, have, uh, I am finishing with uh, two minutes before the estimation, the estim so you will pay me less, I suppose. <laughs> well, this is the same table than before rearranged. We have the application on uh, the left and we have the choice on the right, but it's exactly the same table than before, has only been rearranged. I have some time to spend in the morning, so I rearranged the, the pitch. And uh, these are my details. Telcon is my company. You have uh, both a uh, website and uh, two different uh, uh, address, uh, mail address plus my mobile.